From Hollywood, we present... Bride and Groom. With your master of ceremonies, John Nelson. Thank you very much. Thank you, and good afternoon. Well, it's a lovely, warm summer day in California as we greet another bride and groom wedding party here at the beautiful Chapman Park Hotel on Broadway Wilshire Boulevard. The true love story that will unfold before us very shortly started in San Diego, California, where our pretty young bride answered an advertisement for a position with a firm in which her future groom was employed. Although she might have expected to get the job, she certainly did not expect to get a husband out of it, but actually she got both. And incidentally, this young couple was chosen as the most typical young American couple by officials of the San Diego County Fair from that area and sent here. So I think you can see that they'll have a grand story and be wonderful youngsters. But we'll hear this from them, the story of the romance, just before they go out through the garden here to the old chapel where the clergyman waits. Right now, Jack McElroy. Every day, more and more people are learning the truth about dandruff, are discovering that to get real relief from the most common kind of dandruff, they must destroy the germ called Pterosporum ovale, which many outstanding authorities say is its cause. You see, merely washing or brushing away loose dandruff has no effect whatsoever on this germ. But one thing that does work is double dandrine. For double dandrine gets at the cause and destroys it, actually kills this germ on contact. Even in severe cases, results with double dandrine have been amazing. And the reason for double dandrine's astonishing effectiveness is this. It contains a special ingredient, an active antiseptic so remarkably efficient, many hospitals use it. In double dandrine, we call it Alzan. So stop trying to combat this dandruff with ineffective methods that actually are no better than plain water. They can't compare with double dandrine. For double dandrine destroys the cause. Now remember, if you're not completely satisfied... Return the empty bottle and you'll get your money back. Get double dandarine today. Here come the bride and the groom. So off they go to Buffalo. Or maybe Maine or Kokomo. Here comes the bride. She didn't even say maybe. Here comes the bride, she says yes. Oh, my, another attractive young bride and very handsome young fellow. Got a little nervous. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to introduce our bride and groom to you. Our bride is Miss Barbara Shoup, I believe, is that right? Shoup. Shoup, you pronounce it. Almost there. Mm-hmm. And Robert Edward Dodero. Robert Jr. Edward Dodero Jr. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of names. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, if you will, are you a little bit nervous or... Oh, a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> expected to be. You've been planning this how long? This day? Since last October. Looking forward to mm-hmm. it. Great. Well, suppose you tell us about you, Barbara. Let's get acquainted. Well, my, my name is Barbara Shope. Yes. I'm 19. I was born in National City, and I live in San Diego now. Went to school in San Diego. And uh, live at home with just my mother and dad. You're an only child? Yes, I am. i so. Hmm. I shouldn't be afraid. I think a groom should, maybe. <laughs> Is she spoiled, uh, would you say? A little bit. <laughs> Do you have any plans to change that, to correct it, to get her a little well, change it to my way. You will? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I've been married five years. <laughs> oh, we're only teasing, Bob. We know you'll be very happy. Tell us about you. Uh, I'm 22, and I was born in San Diego, and I live in National City. And I, uh... Went to uh, San Di- uh, school, school there, in finished. San Diego and went to high school in National City and then finished high school in, uh, at Vocational in San Diego. I see. And uh, your occupation? I'm a radio technician. Good. And uh, by the way, how many in your family? Uh, seven altogether. Three brothers and one sister, and mother and father, myself. Mm-hmm. That makes seven. That adds yeah. up. <laughs> well, I'm always surprised when we come out even on these <laughs> Where are you a radio technician, Bob? Dobler Brothers in San Diego. What is it? Dobler Brothers in San Diego. Oh, your boss is listening? Well, he probably is. Let's give him a good, you know, a little push, and maybe they'll get a raise for you. Uh, Dobler Brothers in San Diego. <laughs> what is the address, Bob? 2146 Logan Avenue. And the phone number? Franklin 95168. And if anyone has any radio work they want done, get a hold of 
Robert Edmund. Edward Dodero. Ed Edward. Dodero. Robert Edward Dodero Jr. Yeah. Now, if that boss isn't a tight wad, he'll sure fix you up. He's got a. He, he on the spot. He's got, he's got a Burlingame store, too. A Burlingame store? Yeah. Well, we're heard in Burlingame, so same thing goes. Well, enough advertising for the moment, or our sponsors will wonder who's playing for this program. But we want to, of course, hear your love story as much as you care to tell us just before you go out and sort of say your wedding vows out in the chapel. So who's going to start off? Uh, I'll let her. <laughs> you have the honor. So well, thank you. Go ahead, Barbara. Well, uh, it was very interesting. I went to... Uh... Oh, I'm sure it was. <laughs> and it's still going to be more interesting. So how long ago did this all happen? Uh, it was last July. I see. And uh, it's just a year ago. I went into Dober Brothers. I was going in to apply for a job there. And a uh, very cute-looking boy was coming out at the same time. It was a terrible crash. And we bumped into each other? Yes, time? head on. <laughs> Collision. <laughs> and uh, well, we both backed off and said, pardon me, and went on our way. But it sort of made an impression on both of us. And... Yes, a horrible crash like that brought <laughs> Certainly was. Yes. And, uh, well, I guess Bob or Ed, I call him Ed, uh, persuaded the boss to hire me from the Wait among the right? other ones. Is that right? You got the job? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. You, you, uh, I did a little bit of talking to help her out. Uh -huh. I didn't know her, though. You what? I didn't know her, though. But you knew that if she got the job, you could get yeah. acquainted. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't trying to do the boss a favor. So you, you got the job right yes, away. Yes, uh-huh. you went to work there. What yes. department did you work in? In the record department, and, uh... Well, once in a while I went to the radio department because he was in there. It was much more interesting in there. <laughs> well, you, what, what is your department again? Radio department. Yes. Repairs and so on. Yes. And you had some problems with mm -hmm. repairs that you done I had to there. go ask him a few questions. Mm -hmm. you know. Did you have much business in the record department? Once in a while I had to get scotch tape, you know, hold things together. <laughs> There goes that rage. <laughs> we'll also find out how you two been carried on. Well, anyway, so you worked there. How long was it before uh, Ed, as you call him? May I call you Ed? That That's right. I'll call you Ed, Reverend Bob. How long before Ed got around to asking you for a date, since that's what he had in mind in the first place? It was just a week later, and uh, did he you was... Get, did you get the date? No. <laughs> Well, uh, the reason was that I said yes, and we were all set to go. And my parents were on a vacation in L.A., and I remembered I had to go home water the lawn of all the horrible things, so I couldn't go. Feed the cat. Yeah, feed the cat. <laughs> <laughs> but he wouldn't, I don't think he'd believe me. I think about a week ago I convinced him that that was the truth. I think he thought I had a date with someone else. Did you think that? Ed? No. Honest? Honest. Really? <laughs> Well, we settled that problem. That'll never come up again. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, uh, how, did he ask you again? Oh, uh, yes, uh-huh. He asked me the next, uh, for the date the next Saturday, and I already had a date, and so we couldn't go out then. Well, you sure had trouble getting started, <laughs> didn't you? Well, so. and then the next week he asked, and he said, now, are you sure you can go? You can't think of anything you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no. So we shook hands on it, so it was a date. It was a date. Uh-huh. Where'd you go? Well, we went to uh, downtown and ate and went to, to a show, and it was, uh... Oh, I don't know, a comedy show, and we sat there and laughed, and we discovered Bob we both... Hope. Yeah, Bob Hope. Monsieur Bouquet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bob Hope. Mm -hmm. That's a Paramount picture, I believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll a good one. But anyway, I just wonder, I'm amazed at you two remembering a picture for a whole year, oh. particularly when you were sitting so close together. Uh -huh. But we discovered... Did you hold hands in the movie? No. no. He put his arm around the back of the seat, but that was all. <laughs> <laughs> Look a little disappointed about it. No, it was all right. I... So then you had some date and went home. Mm -hmm. Did you ask her for another date soon, Ed? Oh, yes, but the next week I mm -hmm. asked her to uh, go out and we went uh, ice skating. Mm -hmm. Well, then <laughs> your third date was another week apart? Yes. Only uh... one date a week? Yes. Well, uh, it got going so we had two dates a week. How soon did you start going at two dates a week? Third uh, week, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when did it get even, even more steady? When we were going um, Wednesday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two, we got yeah. three times a week, but we couldn't go anymore because we had to work in the Boston like if we had bags in our eyes every day. You know, we're learning more about the boss down there, Dobler Brothers, than <laughs> about everybody else. Well, anyway, so, so when did you start going steady? Uh, in September. It was the uh, 18th of September. About three or four mm -hmm. months. That's right. Tell me, if you will, please, on which date. This is very indicative. I mean, because mm -hmm. youngsters that are, are so attractive in the beginning that he turns his business upside down to <laughs> get near you. Uh, mm -hmm. On which date did Ed first try to kiss you? Well, uh, it was in September, too. I mean, he didn't, he didn't no. try to kiss you from uh -uh. July to September. That's right. I guess I would have learned before, but I think he wanted to make up his mind. It meant something to him, and I liked it better that way. Sure. Because but you, you would have liked it sooner. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, honey, don't blush. Don't you be bashful at all. I think that's very sweet. Well, it's very I, cute. I mean, I really like him. Sure, sure you liked him, but you knew that he was being very that's sincere right, about I know. it. Well, how long had you gone with her before you decided you'd fallen in love, Ed? Oh, the next month. You mean October. You September. You kissed her, let's see, July you meet her. Uh, August you start going steady. September, September you kiss her. No, you got twisted, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> now, how was it again? July you met the girl. In uh, August you started going steady. Mm-hmm. September we September started. going steady. We kissed you about a week before we started kissed going steady. Kissed you about a week before, and then in October you fell in love. That's right. That's the natural sequence of events. How, how could you tell you'd fallen in love? I mean, what were the symptoms? What did it feel like inside you? Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good description. <laughs> How about you, honey? How long had you gone with him when you decided you were falling in love? I guess about the same about time. About the same uh-huh. time? Maybe a little sooner? It might have been, yeah. Just a little bit uh-huh. sooner. But how did it feel to you? Well, we just enjoyed being together all the time, and we never quarreled, and we just liked everything you the never same. Had any quarrels? We never have. No. I hope you never do. I hope we never do either. We see each other every day, and we haven't so far, so it's sure, well, I think you'll be able to do that makes you great, very well. Um, what are your plans? Are you going to live in San Diego? Mm-hmm. Yes. You going to build your own home then? We hope eventually. Yes. Save some money first. Settle down, then you'll uh-huh. be going to business yourself. Hmm. Oh, man. Don't okay. think about it. You won't go into competition with your present boss, will you? No. That is if you give it that raise. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Well, how long had you gone together when Ed proposed to you, Barbara? It was in October the 21st of October. And where were you and what were you doing? Well, he used to go on calls and uh, pick up some deliveries in the truck. Hmm. And we would write each other notes. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd wait for him after work if he was late. And he wrote me a particularly thick note one day. And what do you mean thick? Well, it was about five pages. Oh, oh, I thought you meant something else. <laughs> no, no. But anyhow, and he handed it to me, and then he walked off, and I opened it up. And inside was a, well, picture of the three paths, a uh, path that we had followed before we came to work together, and then two paths, separate paths we could follow through life, or the one path we could go on together through life. And uh, he just asked me which path I'd like to follow. On this, it was all written out. Well, no, you didn't have nerve enough to ask it directly, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's easier that way. It's easier. <laughs> So what did you do? Well, uh, he came back in a few minutes, and I was thinking it over, and, and he asked me what I thought, and I said, I'd like to take the path together. So from then on, we were engaged, but no one knew it but us. It mm-hmm. was a secret. Mm-hmm. When did you let anybody find out about it? About three weeks ago. Oh! <laughs> well, we better get you two started down that path together. Mm-hmm. You can start right now. We have for the bride her beautiful bouquet designed to match that lovely gown by Mr. John Patrick Burke, our famous floral artist of Beverly Hills. It's a cascade arrangement of white carnations, white asters, and maidenhair fern, tied with white satin streamers, and the removable corsage is made of three large mystery gardenias. The maid of honor's bouquet is an iron bouquet made entirely of sweetheart roses tied with sharpest ribbon. Very beautiful, like all of Mr. Brooks. You are? Beverly Billings. Related to them? Have no, I'm think? not. Miss or Miss. Miss? Mm-hmm. Have any kind of your own? I think so. Ooh. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you, sir? John Trigel of San Diego. And your relationship? None. His friend. You have any? Are you married? No. Any plans? Yes, sir. Uh, no. You two plans? No. <laughs> well, it could be. <laughs> well, we have for the best band the bride's wedding ring. As you folks see here, it's a beautiful diamond band, exquisitely tiny, beautifully designed. Selected from Brock and Company of Beverly Hills in Los Angeles, one of the truly outstanding firms in Judy. Very beautiful indeed. And selected by a bride, and it'll be very beautiful, I think. Yes, do you have on something old? Mm-hmm. And you? Yes. Borrowed? Yes. And blue? I think so. <laughs> yes. Always prepared for me. Can your shoe? Yes, uh-huh. You do have to get everything in. Uh-huh. And the name of your love song? It's now and forever. Now and forever. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what it'll be, because you're starting down that path that he asked you about right now. And as you do, now we'll go down the path. It leads to the altar. There's this beautiful ground to the Chapman Park Hotel. Jack McElroy sings their love song. More and forever is the love we share. Now and forever, here and everywhere. One is hard to guide us, none shall divide us. Now and forever, through eternity, through all the long years of tears and laughter, forever after, love will remain. How did it happen? 
every chance to kiss. It seems that heaven had arranged for this. So it was fated to hearts unmated. Now and forever. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> that was Jack McElroy singing and Gaylord Carter playing as they do very nicely. Well, since this young couple were selected from in competition with all the other young couples in San Diego County as the most typical young American couple in San Diego County. I think they made, did a grand job of selecting, don't you? You betcha. <laughs> well, I want you to... I, I want to introduce to you here briefly and hear a little bit about the fair. Mr. Don Diego of San Diego, of the, of the San Diego County Fair. Don, it's grand to have you here. It's good to be here, Don. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the fair, if you will, please. Well, John, the fair opened last Thursday, and it closes July the 6th. There's so many beautiful exhibits there. I don't know where to start. It would take me an hour. However, I do want to mention our very beautiful flower show and our own giant musical, Fiesta Cade, which stars Leo Carrillo and features songs of old Spain and Mexico. Good. Fine. It's really a wonderful fair. Mm -hmm. Everyone should see it. Well, I'm sure they all will who are down in that direction. Maybe some even drive down from here. I hope so. How many more days does it run? Uh, Till July the 6th. Mm -hmm. I wish you would convey to all the people at the fair our thanks of bride and groom down for selecting this wonderful young couple in the and for all of the work in scouting around to get the very best, most typical young American couple from that county. Indeed I will, John. I'll do that today. Thank you very much, Don Diego. And right now, let's listen to our own Jack McElroy. If you seek business or social success, remember that mouth acids are constantly at work trying to spoil your appearance. These acids are present in everyone's mouth, and many leading dentists explain that they're a major cause of tooth decay. Now, you can't combat mouth acids with top efficiency by using a toothpaste that simply cleans teeth and sweetens breath. Any toothpaste will do those jobs. But one toothpaste that does more is Philips Milk of Magnesia toothpaste. Yes, Philips toothpaste also does the vital job of combating mouth acids on contact and thus helps guard against decay of your teeth. And it does this because it's made from one of the most effective neutralizers of mouth acids ever discovered. An acid neutralizer whose remarkable efficiency is recognized by dentists everywhere. In addition, Philips toothpaste brightens your teeth beautifully. And its cool, minty flavor wakes up your mouth, leaves your breath cleaner, fresher, sweeter. So for everything that any toothpaste can give you, plus the protective advantage that Philips provides against mouth acids, get Philips Milk of Magnesia Toothpaste. Today, ask for P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S, Phillips Toothpaste. Thank you, Jack McElroy. Now for the very important job of describing our bride's outfit, we're very pleased to have a very charming young lady, a starlet from Paramount Studios, a young lady named Margaret Field. Will you come up here, Miss Fields? <laughs> this, young lady, like, this young lady, like almost all professional people, knows a great deal about fashions and... So we'll just have you describe the way to real please. Well, she had on a beautifully simple uh, white nylon satin gown uh, with, I'd say, modified uh, dolman sleeves that were very tight at the wrist and were a little point over her hand. And it had what I'd call a keyhole neckline uh, and a very tight bodice coming out to a hoop skirt. It was very lovely. How about the veil? Well, she had on a, a Juliet cap made of Chantilly lace with a fingertip veil. And she had a lovely ring. Beautiful. Oh, the one we... Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh, the bride's uh, maid, or was it the maid of honor? Bridesmaid. Bridesmaid had on a chartreuse dress. The maid of honor, I beg your pardon, sir. Maid of honor. Yes. She had on a chartreuse dress with uh, fuchsia gloves and a fuchsia hat. Mm-hmm. That's very nice stuff. You know, most of our describers, even people who've had, oh, all sorts of experience, use little notes, and you didn't even have a note on it. You kept it on your mind. Well, I had notes, but I memorized them. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Were you nervous about the <laughs> Yes, I am. Me, you've been in pictures for quite a little while, haven't you? Well, about a year. What was the last picture you made? Uh, Dear Ruth with Joan Caulfield and Bill Hope. Oh, I've seen it. It's an absolutely grand comedy. Yes, it is. I think mean, everybody can enjoy a picture like that. I think you can, too. We like to see bright and gay things like that. Are you married? Yes, I've you? been married for about five years. Do you have any uh, 
Oh, spring at home? Isn't yes, it? I have two. A little boy and a little girl. Oh, wonderful. Mm-hmm. How old are they? Well, uh, Ricky is three. And that's the boy. That's the boy. And Sally is seven months. Do they get harder to raise as they get older or easier? Well, they go through stages of being hard and then easy, and then they're hard again, and then they're easy again. <laughs> they're... Gee, we're going to have to get together right after this program, and you can tell me about the next two years I have. And... <laughs> right, I'll, I'll multiply you. it by two. Thanks so much, Miss Fields, for that very fine job of describing our bride's outfit. You know, that, that is an important job. Until we get television, I, you know, you can't picture the bride. It's in the bride, I forgot to say, was about five feet, um, four and a half, I think. And she had soft brown hair and blue eyes. And the groom, I think, is about five, seven and a half or eight and about the same. Oh, incidentally, Mr. and Mrs. Dick Fortune, you know the couple that we sent around the world via Pan American Airways in the first round the world flight, honeymoon flight in history. Uh, <laughs> well, they're really seeing these. They're on the... Uh, they're, they're traveling on the Pan American Clipper America, and uh, they're certainly seeing the sights. As you can imagine, they've flown over many of the major cities of Europe, Paris, Marseille, Rome, Naples, Athens. They've uh, landed at Istanbul, Turkey, where they had a real oriental breakfast. And so here's a telegram from I think you get a kick. It says, uh, we have arrived in Karachi, India. What a colorful spot this is. We even bought a harem outfit, and boy, do I look good in it. Now, see who signed it. Actually, Chris is bringing... Oh, <laughs> Signed Dick. Actually, Chris is bringing the outfit home for Yvonne De Carlo, uh, for her Technicolor production slave girl, and, and it's signed, uh, uh, yes, Mr. and Mrs. Fortune. I just wondered <laughs> about that. But they're really having fun, and we're so glad they are. Right now, I want to pay tribute to some folks here today celebrating anniversaries with us. First of all, Mr. and Mrs. Walter Robins of Los Angeles, California, who are celebrating a golden wedding anniversary. Mr. and Mrs. A.E. Torson of Hollywood, California. 51 years married today. Mr. and Mrs. Fred L. Topley of Monrovia, California, 54th anniversary today. Mr. and Mrs. John S. McCray of Larwell, Indiana, 55 uh, years married today, their anniversary. But our most honored couple today for the greatest achievement, I mean, the happiest and longest uh, anniversary celebrated today is Mr. and Mrs. Kessler. I don't know where they're from. Where are they from? Mrs. Kessler? Mr. and Mrs. Kessler? Where are you? Where's your home? You from Los Angeles? You live in Los Angeles? Fine. Well, you're from Pasadena. We just want your friends to know you're celebrating with us here. We have for you two gifts in gold, two very beautiful, very thin, 17-jewel Gruen Precision watches, a product of the Gruen Watch Company. Congratulations. Come back and see us on your next anniversary. Back from the chapel, practically walking on air, all smiles and not so nervous anymore. It's our bride and groom. Congratulations to you, Ed. I knew you'd make the grade. Would you step right over here? We have so many lovely gifts for you. First of all, I want you to see. This is your wedding album from Bernard of Hollywood and Palm Springs. It has formal portraits and candid shot pictures of everything that took place here today for our bride and groom. You go along with it. So it's a talking picture from Capitol Records of Hollywood, a special record album of every single word said. You actually have every, everything that was said. So just think on your anniversaries, you can play the records and look back and what memories you'll have at that time. Uh, for your home, here is a beautiful Bendix radio console. It's a, a combination record player and radio. It plays and, and changes 10 and 12 inch records. It has a short wave and a long wave. It's a very beautiful uh, piece of furniture for your home, and I think that you'd be able to listen to Bride and Groom in a great deal of comfort on your Bendix. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. You bet it is. It's a uh, product of the radio division of Bendix Aviation Corporation, and from, from our sponsors, two new products, Philips Skin Cream and Cleansing Cream, presented each day to our bride to help you keep that youthful radiance, the beautiful skin complexion that you have, and. Your sterling silver by Gorham, of course. Since 1831, America's leading silversmith each day, Gorham presents our bride and groom their choice of, of a good many of their many, many exquisite patterns. Nocturne, Greenbrier, Chantilly, King Edward today. Complete service for four, 24 pieces of Gorham sterling. Because you want to take pictures in your honeymoon, too, because you want memories of that. Here's your famous Argoflex camera from the Argus Camera Company. With the reflex action, you can see the pictures you take it and a year's supply of Anakin film, which will probably last you about three days. And uh, this is for you, Ed. The famous Eureka Home Cleaning Unit. You'll be able to <laughs> clean up the house, believe me. Here are the, the four types, the upright cleaner, the tank type cleaner, there's a waxer, and a hundred different attachments, believe me, and also the famous Eureka Service Automatic Iron. Which you, uh, yes, yes, yes. Special lipstick remover, too, Paula. <laughs> he can use it. He can use it. <laughs> Here's a makeup kit for you exactly as created for the stars of Hollywood. This is from Max Factor, so full of their fine makeup. And for your home... A gift to appropriate uh, to, to be appropriate for any bride. It'll delight you at the exclusive Winfield China dinnerware in the famous bamboo pattern for which Winfield is so famous. Complete 
Service for four to go with your silver. You're really set up, aren't you? Well, now, about Dr. Honeymoon, come on over here, if you will, please. Since you are going to be guests of the San Diego County Fair during this coming week, your honeymoon destination is one of California's most famous and most beautiful resorts. You're going to the famous Del Mar Turf and Surf Hotel, which is truly beautiful. You'll be flown down the coast to one of Western Airlines' giant Skymasters to San Diego, where a Tanner Motor Livery Limousine is waiting to drive you there to Hotel Del Mar. Inside the San Diego Fair, you'll be presented at the beautiful Fiesta Cade show. You'll have dinner at the grounds uh, there, and in the evening, there's a special box for you, reserved for you at the National Horse Show. There'll be plenty to do at the fair, but when you seek privacy, manager Owen Winslow Nichols of the Del Mar has set aside a little English cottage, a kind of a honeymoon cottage, just for the two of you. I don't... Well, you didn't think there was going to be three, did you? <laughs> what? Better not. Well, there isn't going to be. <laughs> I know you, you two will enjoy sunning and... Uh, in the breathtaking garden, you can play tennis or swim on the long white beach and a beautiful pool down there. And there are many visiting uh, spots of interest nearby to visit. All in all, when you're staying at Del Mar's over your honeymoon, I know you'll have memories that you've cherished all your life. And we'll fly you back here and wait for you to meet Do you need anything else at all? No, I think it's wonderful. Thank you so much. No well, thanks to me. Couldn't happen to nicer people. Are you still dazed? <laughs> For the bride, our big six-foot type rolling pin, especially for her because she's so tiny. Also, John, we have the kitchen combat model for you, darling. I'll give that to her. Yes. And here's the one for him to protect himself. Oh, fine. Will you, will you single girls get up here, please? You single girls, you aren't married. Yes, you will be, though, soon. All right, now, when I count three, honey, you toss it. Spread out, girls. Spread out. Spread out. Here we go. One. Oh! Oh! That's all right. You're fast. Who are you? Bowling Gary. From where? Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, little southern gal. How, <laughs> how old are you? Eighteen. You have a boyfriend? Yes. You got him? No. <laughs> You're just working on him? Yes. That's right. Well, good luck to you in your work. We have for you some Holly Vogue nylon stockings over here. I think you'll enjoy those. Good luck. And incidentally, if you want some lessons from, the, from our bride here, may I have this for the bride? I'd like to give her the bouquet. If you'd like some lessons from her on how to get the groom, I just let me know. Get that boyfriend of yours to make up his mind. Right now, as our bride and you leaving their honeymoon, let's wish them success, happiness, a long, happy married life together. Mr. Jack McElroy, we'll see the rest of you tomorrow. Most of us eat too much, smoke too much, or overindulge sometime or another. When you do go overboard, remember that Phillips Milk of Magnesia quickly and dependably relieves the discomforts of acid indigestion, which accompany overindulgence. As an acid stomach alkalizer, Phillips is rated among the fastest, most effective known. When taken at bedtime, it works two ways to banish the distress of overindulgence. It relieves heartburn, headachey, upset feeling almost at once. You sleep soundly. What's more, two to four tablespoonfuls of Phillips taken in water when necessary before retiring help you start the day sparkling, refreshed, without that logy feeling. Now ask for genuine Phillips Milk of Magnesia by its full name. That's P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S, Phillips. Caution, use only as directed. And for economy, buy the big 50-cent size. It contains three times as much as the 25-cent size. Sold at all drugstores. Jack McElroy speaking. Bride and groom with John Nelson comes to you every day, Monday through Friday, at this same time from Hollywood. You often tired and pale? Your doctor may find you have a borderline anemia resulting from a ferronutritional blood deficiency. Get the energy you should have. Regain the color that goes with rich red blood cells with the help of ironized yeast tablets. Ironized yeast tablets. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs> 